a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of the righteous. From this time onward, and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
To us a son is born. How God does adore him. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, and because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Well, I suppose we can be grateful this night for the fact that we will not be singing the snow lay on the ground. It is a rather temperate night this night, not a flurry in sight. And yet here we are gathered. We are gathered here to be a part of wonder, mystery, joy. We're going to go home tonight. Perhaps we may go to bed right away, or we might have a, a little something. Or tomorrow, we will gather somewhere for a delightful dinner. We will remember through story the various people that have been, we've encountered in our lives. You know how dinners are when you get together with family and friends. You remember. You remember what happened long ago, and sometimes it's right on, and sometimes it's uh, built on a little bit of mythology. 
that's what we do as human beings. We're good at telling stories. And so tonight, perhaps, it is good for us to, to tell a story. It was a time, many generations ago, when, as we all know, there were great kingdoms with renowned kings who led wisely, but firmly. And then there were those miserable despots who led with conceit and oppression. Among those mighty kingdoms of so, so many centuries ago, a particular one stood out, not for its natural resources, not for its achievements in the arts, not even for its natural beauty. In fact, the citizens of this kingdom scrounged to make a living from barren soil, knew few comforts, lived quite humbly. There was nothing exceptional nor commendable about this insignificant backwater kingdom. Except. Except for one thing. It was one item. One item that resided in the royal palace. The pride of all the citizenry. And it was available for all to experience as an integral part of their collective identity. In a small room in the palace, there were candles aglow in every corner of that room. Everywhere you could see <coughs> candles, all around. The only thing that was there in that room, in addition to those candles, was one little pedestal. Just a pedestal, very small. On that pedestal sat the largest, most glorious diamond ever to come forth from the earth. The clarity and color of this precious gem was so deep and so intense that it caught every glimmer of light, bouncing that light all over the room. Just fantastic. The color, the light coming together just was astounding. People from every kingdom would, would pilgrimage to this little place to be inspired and awed by this magnificent diamond. And then, then one day, the guards in the court came running to the king. My king, the diamond, the diamond is cracked. Well, everybody rushed to the chamber, and it was true. The diamond had a huge crack. It destroyed its clarity, leaving only a, a diffused, muted, and muddy color now on the four walls of that room. The king immediately put the word out to all the best artisans. They were to come and examine the gem and then give their expert advice, and one by one, they did just that. Most renowned gem cutters of the day gave their verdict. I won't touch it. One false move, and the stone will shatter. The stone is irreparable. And my king, the stone is worthless. And it would not take long before no one ventured into the kingdom. Tourism was over. The inhabitants and their king became discouraged and even despondent. Life had lost meaning. It had no joy. It had no pride. Drudgery had become the day-to-day -day job and lot for each and every one of those citizens. And then, then one day, a young man being generous, probably calling him that, but a young man appeared, and he asked to speak to the king. His request was simple, as he was brought before the king. Your Highness, 
I ask that you set me in a secluded room for seven days, and I will use my skills to restore the beauty and the wonder of this beautiful diamond. The king was incredulous, as you could well imagine. Who are you? Who are you to make such an offer? Some young boy that has no reputation whatsoever in the craft. Nobody has ever heard of you. Nobody knows who you are. And you come and you dare to say that you are one of the best craftsmen and that you can do something with this diamond? Really? My king, I know in my heart that I can do this work and restore its brilliance. King relented, and he placed him in a locked room for those seven days. And on the seventh day, the door opened, and the young man emerged. He emerged from that room, carrying the diamond, now shrouded in a velvet cloth. The king and the court assembled. The young man pulled the cloth. They gasped. They were astonished. There was no diamond. But there was a unique, exquisite rose with the light pulsating through every delicate petal. The young boy, with faith in his gift of restoration, had carved this wonderful rose using the crack of that diamond to produce its petals and its stem. He held it high for all to see, and there was indeed joy in the kingdom that day. What can I give you as a reward? The king said, I will grant you anything you ask. Anything. I ask no reward, he said. This is what I do. I take things that are cracked and flawed and even broken, and I make them whole again. This is what I do. We all pushed in, surrounding that rose gem to admire its beauty. And as they did, that young boy quietly picked up his toolbox part of the kingdom, never to be seen, never to be heard of again. Tonight, we celebrate a paradox. We come to celebrate good news, the joyful news of the Holy One whom we have declared from old as wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. And yet, what do we come to? We come to a place of simplicity and quiet. A crash. A stable. We bring our fractured feelings. Our flawed acts of life. Even our broken hopes. We stand at the crib. Admiring a newborn child who offers himself as one who makes us whole again. Joy to the world. That is upon our lips. For we do live with our flaws and our brokenness just as openly and boldly as we live with our hopes and expectations that Emmanuel, God with us, names us each name by name, restores our future, loves us freely and without reserve. The mystery of this night is the image of the Christ child who reaches out to embrace us, to hold us as a parent tenderly holds that tear-stained child, afraid, uncertain, unsure, but hoping, hoping to be loved. And cared for. The Christ mystery this night 
is God embracing each of us. Each frightened and flawed human being. That's who we are. To embrace all of creation. To do so with a powerful, restorative, redemptive love. And so this night is the story that we own. A story that we own as we imagine being loved by God. Flawed. Cracked. Broken. But the story does not end there. For we are also gifted by the Son, Jesus the Christ. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Joy to the world. Joy to us. Rejoice. Emmanuel is here. The prayers of the people. Mary bore a son, and his name shall be Emmanuel. God with us. Let us draw near to the newborn Son of God and in confidence present our prayer. For each of us, that we may receive you with joy and share your love abundantly. We pray to you, wonderful counselor. For families near and far, that all may know harmony and peace among them and that they may rejoice in their love for one another. We pray to you, my God. For children everywhere, that their hearts may be full of hope, and that they may discover the true meaning of this night, as all rejoice in the mystery of Christ's coming to humanity. We pray to you, Prince of Peace. For the sick and the lonely, and for all who wander upon uneven or uncertain paths in their lives, that we may reach out to them as the Christ child reaches forth to touch and bless all of creation. We pray that you might be welcome. I invite you to share your own prayers of concern and thanksgiving this night. especially those who are suffering from depression, especially in this season. For those who are rebuilding their lives after the floods and the fires of recent times. I lift up the homebound and sick of our parish. joy to be within the families of our congregation. Pray for all those who are traveling. They might return home safely. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindle this night in our hearts may shine forth in our acts of mercy and works of justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the gift.
Please be seated. On behalf of the board and all the members of our congregation, I welcome you this night, and I do wish you the blessings of this Christmas, this Christmas season. We take so casually the phrase, Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas. I wish that you will have a blessed Christmas, you and your family and friends, that indeed that you will know the presence of Christ and Christ's peace as we begin to move into this new year. Indeed, Christmas blessings for each and every one of you. And now let us prepare ourselves and the table with the holy gifts of God. Remembering the words of the Holy Scriptures, Walk in love as Christ has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. <coughs> Thank you. 
our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In his right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs>
God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Be not heavy in your hearts. By faith. With thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Christ bring us each to everlasting life. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Bless me, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ's power, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent messengers to proclaim the glad tidings of his son, newly born, fill you with joy and make you messengers of that same gospel this night and always. And the blessing of Almighty God, creating presence, loving Savior, creating spirit, be upon you this night and remain with you always. Amen.